Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Cervone. So in the do now, we have the following six solids. Can you group these solids in any specific order or any specific ways? Well, one way to group these uh, is, for example, based on uh, the surfaces. For example, if you look at uh, figure A, D, and F, these all consist of rounded lateral surfaces. Whereas B, C, and E consist of flat surfaces and edges. How else could we group these figures? Another way to group these is by looking at the figures and seeing which ones has bases and which ones do not have any bases. For example, if you look at figure A and F, uh, these have completely rounded surfaces without any bases. Uh, if you look at D, even though the, uh, you know, this figure has a rounded surface, it consists of two bases. So what we can do is to group D and E together because they contain at least one base. And finally, if you look at figure B and C, uh, well, these two consist of regular polygons. So as a matter of fact, in today's lesson, uh, this is something I would like to look at. Look at figure B and C, the ones that consist of regular polygons. And it turns out that these have special names and have a special meaning in Euclidean geometry. So let's look into more detail. How are all these figures called in geometry? Well, all these figures here, except A and F, are called polyhedra. So here's the definition of a polyhedra. Well, what is a polyhedron? Well, let's learn some Greek. The word poly means many and hedron means faces. It's very similar to what we have learned in the past when we talked about regular polygons. Do you remember what polygon means? Well, in Greek, again, poly means many and gon means angles. But let's define the word polyhedra a little bit more in detail. Here's the definition. So a polyhedron is a solid which is completely enclosed by regular polygons. Hence the definition in Greek. Well, we know that polyhedron are, you know, built made out of faces or consist of faces. Uh, so a face is just a flat surface of a polyhedron. Where do the face meet? Well, the faces intersect and create an edge. So an edge is where two faces intersect. And finally, when the edges intersect, they create vertices. So a vertex is where edges meet at a point. Now here comes the interesting part. There's something called a regular polyhedron, very similar to regular polygons. And a regular polyhedron is defined as follows. A regular polyhedron is a polyhedron whose faces are identical regular polygons. All side lengths are equal and all angles are equal. And this is why we were able to group figure B and figure C together, because there's something special about these figures. These two figures are regular polyhedra. And today's lesson is all about regular polyhedra. As a matter of fact, another name for regular polyhedra is also platonic solid. Because we give credit to Plato who came up with this, he actually said and stated that there are only five platonic solids in Euclidean geometry. And he's actually right. And into this lesson, we'll figure out, okay, which ones are these five platonic solids or regular polyhedra and why are they only five? So this will be very interesting to analyze. So without any further ado, let's get into the first regular polyhedra or the first platonic solid. So the first platonic solid or regular polyhedron is called a tetrahedron. Again, the word tetra comes from the Greek, which means four, because a regular tetrahedron or regular polyhedra, in this case, the tetrahedron consists of four triangular faces, six edges and four vertices. But the word four for triangular faces, there are four. The next one is called 
the hexahedron. Uh, the word hexa means six because a cube consists of six faces or square faces in this case. Uh, the next one is called an octahedron. Octa means eight in Greek. Uh, so this figure consists of eight regular triangles or eight equilateral triangles. Uh, then we have a dodecahedron, which looks like this. I'm sure many of you have seen this figure before. Um, and as a matter of fact, dodeca means 12 in Greek. It consists of 12 pentagonal faces. And the icosahedron uh, looks like this, which consists of 20 triangular faces. Hence the word icosa in Greek, which means 20. Okay, so these are the only regular polyhedra in existence, the five famous platonic solids, the tetrahedron, hexahedron, uh, the icosahedron, the dodecahedron, and over here we have the octahedron as well. Okay, so these are the five platonic solids. But here's a discussion for you. Why are there only five platonic solids? Can't we make more platonic solids out of regular polygons? Hmm, that's strange that there are only five platonic solids. It seems like that you can make infinitely many, but there are only five. Why is that? Let's look at an example. Here we have an octahedron. So if you look at a vertex, for example, over here, so let me mark this vertex. How many degrees do we have all around the vertex. Well, we know that this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. Okay, so if you do the math, if you take four times 60 degrees, you end up with 240 degrees. Well, then you ask yourself, okay, so why is, why is this number important? Well, let's think about this. If, let's say, you have more regular triangles that are at a vertex, let's say six triangles or six regular triangles, in this case, six equilateral triangles, if you have six, right, then you end up with 360 degrees, okay? But what's the problem with this? The problem is, you end up with a flat figure, okay? Uh, because 360 degrees can only be drawn on a flat surface. You basically end up with a tessellation of regular uh, triangles in this case. So the condition here, and let me write this down. The condition is that, or condition one, that the degree measure around the vertex uh, let me call that degree theta, has to be less than 360 degrees. If not, uh, your figure is going to be flat at that vertex instead of three-dimensional, okay? So anything less than that would work. Uh, a second condition, condition number two, let's write this down. Well, how many... Uh, polygon or let's say how many polygons do you have to have or regular polygons at least to make an enclosed figures and the answer is three right because if you have only two of them you cannot really make an enclosed figure but at least three so maybe we can write here at least three regular polygons at a vertex. So if you look at these conditions, there are only five figures that you can make. But let me give you another example that is similar to this one. So here we have an icosahedron. Are the conditions met? Well, let's look at this. If you, take it a, if you look at a vertex here, right, you, you have one, two, three, four, and five, okay? So you have five uh, equilateral triangles at a vertex. So if you do five times 60, well, that is equal to 300 
degrees. So that means the first condition is met, and the second condition, at least three regular polygons on a vertex, is also met. Okay, uh, but obviously you can change this number, for example, 3 times 60, 4 times 60. In this case, we already have the 4 and we have the 5. Well, 6 doesn't work, so we're left with 3 and that's it. Because you cannot have only one uh, regular or run equilateral triangle or two of them, but you have to have at least three. So, so the only number that is missing to check is three, right? Three times 60. And that is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, is there a figure that satisfies this? As a matter of fact, a tetrahedron has exactly three equilateral triangle uh, at each vertex. For example, if you take the vertex at this point, here we have 60, here we have 60. Well, then there's another triangle inside here. So if you want to see this three-dimensional, for example, if you draw this triangle in there, there's another angle here, which is also 60 degrees. So we have three times 60 degrees is equal to 180 degrees, okay? So now we covered all of them. We have three triangles. We have four triangles here and five triangles here. Again, you cannot put six triangles because then you have 360 degrees and you cannot uh, place less than three equilateral triangles at a vertex because then you do not end up with the closed figures, okay? Uh, then you basically check through the list, okay? The first polygon is an equilateral triangle. The second polygon that you want to check is a square, okay? So again, with squares, let me write this here, square. Again, the first condition, you cannot have less than three. So if you take three squares and do times 90, what do we get here? You end up with 270 degrees, okay? Well, do we have a figure like this? Well, let's check. There it is, a cube. At this point, this is 90, this is 90, and this is 90 degrees. Hence, the total is 270 degrees. Uh, can we have a figure with four 90 degrees? Um, and the answer is no, because four times 90, you end up with 360 degrees, and again, that will become just a flat tessellation like this. So you would have kind of like a grid like this, where this is 90, 90, 90, and 90, and all of this is 360 degrees. So this becomes a flat tessellation and it does not become a solid anymore. And then you continue with the next uh, regular polygon. For example, after the square, you end up with pentagons, okay? Uh, so for the pentagon, what is the interior angle? Okay, so let me write this. Uh, here we have a regular pentagon. Um, each interior angle is equal to 108 degrees. Okay, now again, the condition at least three, right? So if you do three times 108 degrees, so you end up with 300, oops, 324 degrees here, okay? Um, so that works. Definitely two doesn't work, okay? This doesn't work here because um, the, to make a figure enclosed, you need to at least to have at least three uh, regular polygons here. Now, it, what happens if you do four of those? Would it work? Well, four times 108, is equal to, so we do the quick math here, 432 degrees, okay? And what's the problem with that? That it, that is greater than 360. And you cannot make an enclosed figure uh, with a degree measure that is greater than 360 degrees. It would actually warp towards the outside instead of the inside, so that doesn't work either. So that's the only figure that we can create. And do we have one like this? And we saw it that we actually do. And it is the dodecahedron, okay? 
Um, as a matter of fact, here at the vertex, we have one, two, and three. And each are 108 degrees because these consist of regular pentagons and each interior angle of a regular pentagon is 108 degrees, okay? And then you continue down the list. For example, now you can look at the regular hexagon. Okay, what can you say about the regular hexagon? Hmm. Well, we know that each interior angle is 120 degrees. Again, at least three, right? So if you do three times 120 degrees, we end up 360 degrees. So that doesn't work anymore, okay? Uh, again, the figure has to be, um, uh, you know, a uh, platonic solid has to have at least three regular polygons. So the thing is that this is not going to look correctly or it's going to be just a flat tessellation that looks as follows. Okay, and I'm sure many of you have seen this before, this type of tessellation uh, consisting of regular hexagon, maybe tiles on the bathroom floor or anything like that. Again, here at the vertex, we have 120, 120, and 120. Uh, so we have 360 all around here, and that is going to be flat. You cannot make a solid out of this. So that's the reason why we only have five platonic solids. The reason is because of these two conditions. At each vertex, the sum of all angles uh, created by the vertices of the uh, regular polygons has to be less than 360 and the second condition here that at least three regular polygons must meet at the vertex to create a figure. So that's basically it for today on the lesson on um, regular polyhedra. Uh, please keep in mind that a regular polyhedra consists of uh, regular polygons. Uh, these are also known as platonic solids. And there are only five of them that you can make that are platonic solids, okay? Um, so I'm going to post a link to another YouTube video that I would like you to watch. Uh, please watch that video. It's very visual and very interesting the way it's made with beautiful graphics and animations and sounds. Um, after that, uh, you may want to complete uh, the worksheet, uh, homework 92, that is in Schoology. Other than that, um, if you have any questions, please email me or put a comment in this YouTube video. Uh, but again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you. Have a good day.